Okay, so just letting you all know, this is going to be a really interesting video, and it's going to be slightly different than what I've done before. We're going to talk about one of the scariest moments of my paranormal career, and we're also going to talk about one of the stupidest things I've ever done. So, in order to get an idea for the story, we're going to have to go all the way back to April 2nd of 2016. Yeah, no, six years. Seems like a thousand years ago, especially with what's gone on. But I'm 16 years old, obviously. I'm in military school, and I had just gotten word from someone who was a part of a radio network that I was a part of at the time, and they said, hey, we're throwing an event at St. Almond Sanatorium in Radford, Virginia, and we knew that you've said this is your bucket list place. You've always wanted to go there. You know, it, it's got a reputation that, you know, precedes itself. Would you like to go and investigate as a part of an event? So of course me, you know, understanding that I've been wanting to go here for a very long time, I said yes. Now, another reason that I was so super excited to go is because at the time uh, for investigations, for a lot of locations, you had to be 18 years old to investigate, and that includes St. Almond Sanatorium. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same now. I think it might be a little different. Um, it'd have to be. I investigated there when I was 17. Mm. So anyway, so I was super excited because, you know, I thought I was going to have to wait another two years and save up my money a bit more to investigate this place, as a, even as a part of an event. So, of course, Chris and I, we were going to go. Uh, we got there and it was just, it was so freaking cool. I mean, I spent a week before reading about the place, looking at videos of it, pictures of it, everything St. Albans. I just basically immersed myself in it, you know, while still doing my military school stuff, you know, we had parade season coming up and all that fun stuff that I used to do, but it was weird because I remember making the turn to go across the bridge towards St. Albans, um, and it was weird because, you know, I had seen so many pictures of it. I'd seen so much video of the inside, the outside. It felt like I had been there a million times, even though I had been nowhere near it physically. It, it, that's just how it felt to me. You know, some people say I might have felt, you know, almost like, like a calling or like an empathic response to it. But I know when I first saw the structure, it, it took my breath away. And it's one of those, you know what it looks like, you know what it's supposed to feel like, but when you actually see it, it hits you differently. And I remember we parked um, towards one of the lower levels and we made the long walk up the hill towards it because we need our exercise. So, or at least that's the excuse my dad gave, even though there was parking closer to the building, but we're not gonna talk about that. So get into the building and you can just feel the energy. And you know, I'm so super excited. And the investigation that night, we were with some really awesome guys. I'm still very good friends with them. Um, they actually run a group called Appalachian Supernatural Society, which if you haven't seen their work on YouTube, it's really, really good. Um, they do a lot of stuff at St. Albans. And whenever I go back down there, I use their videos. It's kind of like homework. Um, so definitely check them, check them out. Tell them Jake sent you. Um, but I remember we had a really active investigation and we got a lot of great stuff. I think within the course of five hours, we got like 40, between 40 to 50 class B and A spear box and EVP responses, which, you know, for an investigation for an eight hour, that's really good. But for five hours, I mean, that's amazing. So I remember weeks go on, I'm doing my studies, got quizzes, tests, we're getting close to the end of the year. And in school, whether it's, you know, I don't care what grade you're in, even in college, that's the most stressful time. And then also, um, I was a part of honor guard at military school, so we had special ceremonies and drill I had to do. Um, it just, a lot of stuff hitting at once. And I had, my mind, it seemed like, was focusing on so many different things at once. But there was this voice in my head that told me, hey, you need to go back to St. Albans. It's been a while since you've been to St. Albans. Why don't you go back? And it's weird looking back now, I remember hearing it in different voices. You know, some would be male, some would be female. And some people say that, you know, it's oppression, possession. I don't believe so. Um, there are ways that spirits and locations can call you and leave an imprint on you without it being oppression or possession. And I think for some reason, I had a response to that place. And I just wanted to go back, you know. For some reason, there was 
I mean, I felt like I kind of done everything. Um, now, of course, whenever you're in an investigation, you know, when you're packing up and leaving, you always say, oh, I'd love to go back. That was cool. But when I said that this time, when we were driving back, it, it felt kind of different. And, you know, I remember not being scared of the voices. I remember, I remember thinking, oh, I've never experienced this before. But then again, at the time, I'd only been in the field investigating for about two years at this point. So I was still kind of new. Um, and then I saw that they were doing an event in May. Um, it was May 13th, Friday the 13th event. I'll never forget it. And it, it was a dark, dark event. There was just a dark energy. Um, I became a little obsessive about the place. I, I don't know why. Um, and it was just a very strange energy in the place uh, when we went there. And I remember there was a lot of people, but there was just kind of that weird negative energy about St. Albans. I'm not exactly sure why, but we had had some negative voices over the spirit box. Some people had seen some really strange things in our group. Mind you, this is all during the course of a public investigation. So for those of you who foo foo, oh, public investigations suck. No, they can be really fun. They can be really intense. And it's a great way to investigate or scout out a location without spending, you know, hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So I highly recommend doing it, not just for those reasons, but also to, to support the paranormal team and the location. So that's my spiel about that. But I remember towards the end of the night, we had, you know, you've heard me talk about it before where we had lost time. People said that they were looking for us, spending like 10, 15 minutes looking for us, and they couldn't find us, even though we were down the hall and in a room speaking really loudly. No one could hear us. It, it doesn't make sense. Um, but we ended up in the side room, my dad and I, and, you know, I just remember being in the side room. I don't remember how I got there. Um, I've went back and listened to the voice recorder. I don't hear any of us say, hey, let's check out this room, or hey, let's go over here. And it made no sense whatsoever. I, I can't explain. I've talked to many people and, you know, they've experienced similar things under um, in demonic situations, um, which I'm not 100% sure this was demonic, but I think it, I'm kind of leaning towards it was, but I remember seeing movement out of the corner of my eye. So I looked and I saw just this huge blob creature with these, you know, huge black eyes, at least like this big around. And it had like a weird crook smile that kind of came in like a crook here it was very inhuman looking and it came into the doorway and it stopped and did kind of like a this motion and it didn't seem to be walking it was more of like it was like it was gliding back and forth it was just very smooth and i remember it had like these weird swirls and it almost looking like black holes if you've ever seen you know like one of those high res uh pictures of black holes that's kind of what it looked like so I just remember my first reaction was, what the blank and blank is that? And my dad going, what, what? I don't know why, and this is the topic of today's video, why did I chase it? So after I said my little spiel, what the blank is that? I ran after it. And I don't remember thinking in that moment. It's almost like, you know, when you have those, you know when you have those moments where, you know, you're seeing your life but you kind of feel like you're seeing it through, you know, like a TV screen or you're watching it on like a movie. You don't feel like you're actively a part of it. You're just an observer. That's kind of what this felt like. And I've never, ever felt that since on an investigation or really in life in general. Um, but I remember chasing after it, going into the hall, back out to the main hallway. Um, if you've been to St. Albans, it's through the weird octopus garden room where they have the weird mural, the fish on the wall. Um, and I chased it into the hall and it stopped at the bottom of the stairs where you can go up into the attic, uh, where the suicide bathroom is, the rocker room, or you can go down a level. I can't remember where those stairs end up, but it ends close to the main floor. Or you can continue down, you know, appropriately named Demon Hallway. Um, and then that takes you near like the bowling alley, stuff like that, I think. Um, but that's where it stopped. And it did like this weird basketball pivot. And I remember I stopped dead in my tracks. And, you know, I'm literally probably three or four feet away from it. And it was just, it was just this horrible, just heat coming off of it. You know, they say with demons, you smell like rotten flesh, rotten eggs, you know, sulfur, bad smells, basically. I didn't smell that from this. I just remember there was like heat, like kind of like this kind of deal radiating off of it. 
Um, I didn't hear any sounds. It made no noise whatsoever. But I remember just me and so I'm like, oh crap, oh crap. And I couldn't speak, I was frozen. And I remember my dad come running through. He was like, oh my, he was like, holy me, blank and blank. And he was like, Jake. And I remember, you know, he was like back away slowly and I was able to back away into, you know, the weird octopus garden room. And the thing started coming towards us. And it's like I said, it's just gliding and it's just, it's so freaking inhuman looking. I, I still get nightmares about it occasionally because it just, it was that disturbing. You know, six years later and it still messed with me. So hence why I'm able to tell the story vividly because, you know, sometimes when I'm back in that area, I kind of relive it simply because it's, it was something that changed me as a paranormal investigator. But I remember we went back to the room we were in, which, uh, was Evan Radford's room. You can't really get to it now. I know the last four times I've been there, they've had it blocked off. But it was this room and it had writing on the wall um, that said Evan Radford's room. And what was the other thing it had? It had a whole bunch of newspapers and stuff, but we're basically holding up in there. Um, we had a spirit box session. It was just horrible. Um, none of the demonic creatures the blob voices, I guess is what we'll call it, were recorded, even though to us in real time, it was class A and on the voice recorder, you can hear us respond to what it's saying. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. It wasn't recorded properly. I don't know why, but I remember we left. There was missing time again. People were like, oh, you've only been gone two minutes, even though the voice recorder said we were gone like 15 to 17. It, it makes no sense. So why did I chase it? Well. I think it's one of those cases of protecting yourself on an investigation, but it's also, you know, human instinct. And that's something that these entities do prey on. You know, I consider myself a good investigator, you know, even before I really got into the in the field investigations, I spent years researching, you know, how to be safe, you know, what are proper protocols, you know, if A, B, and C happens, what, what do you do? How do you respond to that? And I remember my dad taught me a lot about, you know, how to protect yourself. Don't do this, don't do that. So why was it in that moment, I basically disregarded all of that stuff. Um, I think it's one of those things where it triggered, the blob thing triggered a natural response. You know, if you see something quick, do something weird in front of you and then seemingly retreat, sometimes you get that it's not really fight or flight but it's it's kind of that fight response that you know you want to chase after it you either want to you know pursue it and see what it is or you even going back to like hey man you pursue it and kill it you know if you want to think about it you know historically or you know evolutionally evolutionally that's not a word but i just invented it so i think that it triggered that response in me so that it could lure me into a vulnerable spot. Um, another entity at St. Albans that did this was uh, Tall Man. And that's, I'm gonna do a video on Tall Man because there's so much that goes into that. But that was one of the last few times I've been to St. Albans, I've heard horrible stories about it. I had a really close encounter with it that, it, it comes close to the blob creature, but it felt kind of different. Um, yeah, that was, that was a horrible, horrible experience too, but they both kind of did the same thing. Um, the difference was with the blob creature, my dad was there to kind of help me out. Uh, with the tall man, I was on my own and I think I did all right. I mean, I did have to run for my safety because I legitimately thought it was going to kill me. It just, I had that feeling, which I might do a video on it later, but these entities, they're out to hurt us in a lot of cases. They want to do us some form of harm. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit, doesn't matter if it's a lot, doesn't matter if it's physical, mental, it, it does not matter. These things by design, we're talking about demonic entities, they want to do us harm. And if we're going down the logic that this was a demonic entity, then Lord knows what it was trying to do or what it could have done. I mean, it, it obviously has left scars because you know I still have nightmares about it six and a half years later. Anytime I go back to that area, you know, I, I just have flashbacks to it and I get kind of uneasy whenever I'm there. I mean, the la heck, the last time I was at St. Almonds earlier this year, I walked up and down Demon Hallway by myself in almost pitch darkness. But uh, even though I did that, and there's really no reason to do it, you know, people are like, oh, you're bragging about something stupid. It's like, no, I kind of wanted to prove to myself that, you know, six years later, that moment still didn't, you know, I guess had power over me. And it's something that, you know, I don't like to dwell on 
So because it is kind of sad and it is one of my low moments as a paranormal investigator, but I'm also glad it happened because it did make me a better paranormal investigator um, and I have been able to impart that wisdom onto others. Now, when it comes to the experience I have with Tall Man, that's something that's gonna be saved for another day because that basically takes this experience and kinda takes it up about five or six notches and that that's one of those ongoing things. I'm hoping I can get back to St. Albans here soon um, as in within the next few months uh, to see if I can kind of get to the bottom of that. But basically the idea of this video is don't make the same mistake I did. Stay grounded as a paranormal investigator. Maintain the safety of yourself and the safety of those around you and then the safety of the location. You know, God forbid something happened and you know, I started running, you know, I could have broken something, I could have fallen in something, I could have hurt myself or hurt someone else. And that's something that you don't need. And that's definitely something the location doesn't need for insurance purposes and for obvious reasons. Um, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this experience. Um, I know I listed some things I could have done better, uh, which, you know, is breathing, you know, staying more grounded. Uh, maybe more white light exercise, which is something I do to protect myself. Maybe you say a bit more prayer. Um, but I would love to hear what you think I could have done better, you know, or what I could do better or what other people can do better to protect themselves against stuff like this. If you have any questions about the video, anything I brought up or anything about St. Almonds or the experience that I talked about, leave in the comments below or you can privately message us. But if you enjoy the video, please leave a like and a comment. We very much appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. We really, really appreciate it. But I'm Jake from Fife Paranormal. Have a good day, everyone.